Because we're a small group, you come a little closer, I feel less like ready after so many years of talking to a yeah. screen. Oh, is that loud? That seems hot, doesn't it? That's very nice. <laughs> Any luck? Yes, it's it's you like. Okay. Okay. Maybe I don't know if it seems a little echoey and loud. If you can yeah. turn turn down the um. here. Can you turn these lights on? They're over there. Sorry, a thousand little things to do. No, it's Thank you. Just easier than setting up a password. <laughs> if there's any extra, you can keep it aside. Om. Jai Ma, Jai Ma. Only 15, 60 minutes late. <laughs> O Mangalam Guru Devaya Devi Matriksha Mangalam Mangalam Bhakta Brindebhyo Sarva Lokai Mangalam Om Stapakaya Chadarmasya Sarva Dharma Sarupini Avatara Varishta Ramakrishnaya Mangalam Om Sarashiva Samarambam Shankara Charam Ajama Mashvara Chara Prayantam Bande Guru Parambaram Om Guru Brahma Guru Vishnu Guru Devo Maheshwara Guru Devo Param Brahman Tasmai Shri Guru Vedama Om Badra Kali Namo Nityam Saraswati Namo Namaha Viraviranga Viranda Vijasthana Evacha Sri Ganesha Sharada Guru Bhyo Namaha Hari Om Jai Ma Jai Ma So continuing after a long time, uh, after a long break, um, our discussions on the Kali Sahasranama. We've been talking about this text, The Thousand Names of Goddess Kali, for some years now. Um, figured it's a good way to keep our mind thinking and talking about Kali without running out of information. We got a thousand names. We're right now in name. We're in the two, 263 out of a thousand. So we're only getting started. Um, uh, and we actually, we were, we restarted after a long, after a kind of long break, with COVID break. <laughs> we can call COVID a break. We, we picked up after COVID and then Revere Swami Chetan Nandamji Maharaj was here for the winter. So we, we let him speak during the winter. We got an opportunity to hear him. And so we're picking up uh, where we left off. So we were, uh, uh, I don't think anybody here was here when my last, the last discussion was on verse 34, which I gave you. And we got the first group of names in the first half line. And the way the Kali Sarasanama is, it's they're like, like, if you're familiar with Lita Sarasanama, the verses are there. And within the verses, they can be chanted in verse form, sloka. Or they can be chanted in as Namavali. Like for instance, the first verse is Lita Sasana Shri Mata Simha Rajni Simha Simha Sanishri. So within that first half line, there's already three names. Shri Mata, and that can be turned into Shri Matre Namaha. Then Simha Rajni, Simha Rajni Namaha. Like, like that, right? So it can be done as mantras like that. So similar with Kali Sasanama. So in this first verse, Padma Padma Laya Padma Mukhi Pad Mukhi Padma Vibhushana. It's Om Padma Yue Namaha, Om Padma La Yue Namaha, Om Padma Mukhye Namaha, Om pa Padma Bibushana Yue Namaha. It works. So you can do it name by name if you're offering like 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 flowers or kum kum or something like that, um, or or, uh, uh, or it can be meditated on just a sloka. Padma Padma Laya Padma Mukha Padma Bibushana like that. So this first uh, last I can't say last week last time we 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 talked on this Padma Padma Laya Padma. <clears throat> actually, because it's a small group, it's easy to do. Um, we can recite it. Actually, very nice. So it's, see, I, I, my idea of a class on, on Kali Sasanama is a class on the meaning of Kali Sasanama, not on the recitation of Kali Sasanama. That I myself, I'm not expert at. <laughs> I would love to have somebody really teach us the recitation of Kali Sasanama. Uh, um, we were, we have uh, some slight training in other other slokas. This is not our specialty, although we love this first very much. We maybe. I have a few friends that could, that are really expert in pronunciation. Maybe they could 
get a chanting class for this text like to go along with the meaning class right let me get my let me get my my uh, rhythm right <clears throat> what i'll do i'll chant half the line you can repeat or or i'll chant one fourth of the line padma padma laya padma 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 laya padma mukhi padma bibushana mukhi padma bibushana you can repeat after padma padma laya padma 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 Laya Padma Mukhi Padma Bibushana Mukhi Padma Bibushana Dakini Shakini Kshanta Dakini Shakini Kshanta Rakini Rudhira Priya Rakini Rudhira Priya Padma Padma Laya Padma 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 Laya Padma Mukhi Padma Bibushana Mukhi Padma Bibushana Dakini Shakini Kshanta Rakini Shakini Shanta Rakini Rudhira Priya Rakini Rudhira Priya So just quickly, just uh, for completion, I'll mention a little bit what these first mantra, these first names, and we get, I mean, the, the recording is there if you're interested in, in, in the significance. All these names are describing she is Padma, she is the lotus. And so that, that connects her, so we talked a lot about last time about the nature of why What's the spiritual significance within Hinduism and Tantra of the lotus, right? Lotus and lotuses, and then the deities connected with the lotus. And by calling her, so sometimes some of the names are describing the nature or a name of the of goddess Kali herself. Sometimes it's describing a name of another goddess. But by saying it's in the Kali Sasanam, it's saying that that other goddess is Kali. That's the idea of the Mahadevi. That there's one great goddess. And I'm, her name Kali, and all the different gods and goddesses are her rupas. So that's one way of understanding. Another thing is describing some of one guna of her. She who is like, she who is angry, she who is blissful, or she who is compassionate, right? Uh, uh, that's another uh, t uh, category of names. Others is um, describing some um, um, attribute or, or decoration. She who has... Uh, who holds a club, or she who sits on a lotus, or dwells in a lotus, like that. So some of these names are playing with that. So by saying she's Padma, we have to think, what does lotus mean? This is, I gave it an hour talk on this, so I don't get to read. My, 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 my tendency is to re-give the class I just gave, so I'm trying to control myself as my, as my rub up. right? But, um, but also, there's deities called Padma. Padma is a name for Lakshmi. So it could be that she is a lotus, whatever the lotus means, but could also mean that she's Lakshmi. Because that's that's by by because one of her names in the Kalasalam is Saraswati, right? Or 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 Durga, or Chinamasta, or Pratangira, right? So there's that type of quality too, but we have to think what what does lotus mean? And Padmalaya, Padmalaya, she who dwells in a lotus, right? Padmamuki, she whose face is lotus-like or whose face is a lotus, and we discussed various ancient deities like. Uh, Lajagodi, like that. Literally, the goddess is with a giant lotus for a face. There's that, but usually it's meant poetically, right? She whose face is like a lo beautiful, like a lotus, stainless, like a lotus. Sometimes we see lotus eyes. Doesn't mean she has two big lotuses for eyes, but her eyes are like lotus petals, which are like this. You know, there's ways of understanding. So a lot of we last time we talked about the metaphoric, the secondary meaning, the poetic meaning, the primary meaning. We talked a little bit of some of those principles. And then um, Padmamukhi and Padme Bhubushana, she who is decorated by lotuses. So it could be she's as beautiful as a lotus, she wears lotuses, she holds lotuses, she has a lotus garland. Of course, recent Ma here, of course, usually we think Ma Kali, what is her garland? She has uh, a Mundamala, she wears a garland of severed heads, mm -hmm. right? Or uh, sometimes Akshamala, Vanamala, but so also here by saying Padma Bhubushana, maybe she's decorated by lotuses also. And recently, during we had Ma was wearing beautiful lotus garden. You do see Ma with lotus gardens? Okay, we're very happy. I, this has seemed like an impossibility for us ever to have lotus garlands for Ma, mm -hmm. right? But nowadays, people have licenses to send yeah. flowers from India, right? And their beautiful lotus garlands were made in Chennai and mm -hmm. FedExed. Yeah. <laughs> so almost so for three days straight, we had it on Shivaratri, on Amavasha, and Sri Ramakrishna Puja. We had Ma wearing. Huge long lotus garland. That was very. I was thinking of this name, Padme Bibushana, decorated. Ah, Ma's also Padme Bibushana. So, in the previous verse, which I don't think I have in my list here, let me double check if I do. Yeah, so I'll, I don't have it on, on on this, but in my notes I have the previous verse, 
It said, um, Nandini stutya sta, uh, stavani vishwabhavani rakini bankini chitra vichitra chitra rupini. So it introduced a category of, of, of deities, rankini and bankini. Right, and so again, this is picked, and very often the Kali Sasanama, there's clusters of names that kind of relate to each other, right? So here, Rankini and Bankini, right? And here, now we have Dunkini, Dakini, Shakini, Rakini, mm. right? So these are these are hidden category, a category of deities or subdeities, right? And in the in Rankini and Bankini, we talked about these are um, these these relate to deities in the in the um, uh, in the chakras, right? And there's every each of our chakras there are um, presiding devatas, right? And then also a basic jayama jayama, jayama. What a nice surprise, jayama. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, uh, so those were deities of um, of uh, and also the, a, a principal. This cluster of deities are deities of the, mentioned in the chakras, like I said, Rakini, Dakini, Makini, or also their auxiliary of Varna Devatas. These are deities that are are are, are attendants um, or associates of, a, of of the goddess, right? And so that's a, that's another quality a quality of goddess worship and a tantra in general. Very often there's a a general thing you could say about family resemblance type of thing you can say about tantra in general. Is the idea that there's a and the, our yantras and mandalas as yantras and mandalas are distinctly tantric quality, and so the, these have the idea of a of a deity surrounded by other deities, right? So Kali in the center, surrounded by the Nitya Kali, surrounded by the Matrika, surrounded by the Bhairavas, surrounded by the Dikpalas. That's a common way of thinking. Even above the door here, you have Radha Krishna, surrounded by eight gopis. Right, that's a very common thing, also. Right, so you Radha Krishna, and you got your text uh, uh, surrounded by gopis. So there's eight gopis, and there's hundred eight gopis, and there's sixteen thousand gopis. Right, surround uh, no eight gopis, hundred eight gopis, sixteen thousand uh, uh, wives. Right, so in in his mandala. So that's a that's a theme. So here again, we're bringing together this idea of these uh, mandala or varna devatas. Right. So in the previous verse, it was. Were they uh, Rankini, Bankini, and yeah, and and th th that category? So now it picks up again, half, half. Where are we? Let me, get, let me catch up with my notes here. Nandini, sorry, Bankini, Chitra, Chitra. So actually, even being that this next cluster, this it's a continuation of of these these devita, these dev, these devis that are connected to the mandala, right? These groups of yoginis around that surround and serve ma or manifest ma or you can think what that what that is. So then then it even makes perhaps even gives an insight into these padma names that we talked last time: padma, padmalaya, padma muki, padma bhushana. Because a very big theme of a yantra is that of a blooming lotus, right? In the center, the deities and the petals that open up into the world are her shaktis that go out, something like that. So there be, it could be a connection. The problem, one of the problems, and one of the reasons we're excited to continue speaking and commenting on on, on Kali Sasanama and is, is, is because there are no commentaries on the Kali Sasanama that I know of. Right, but that also makes it really difficult and really nervous because I could just be making all this up. <laughs> the names are there's no there's no precedent where this group of names this means this and it's collected because of this. We can, so we're given names to meditate upon and to recite, right? Revealed by ancient yogis, right? So we're ben we're thinking so we're just using it as an opportunity for med to meditate on all kinds of different topics. So when I make a statement, all oh, these these relate to the, the blooming lotus of the yantra, maybe. <laughs> Maybe not, you know, right? But it's nice to think of blooming lotuses of yantras surrounded by dakinis and like that. That's, that's a nice meditation. So it's an opportunity to think about these things. So then, so uh, the um, so the first, the second half of verse thirty-four, dakini, shakini, shankini, ran, uh, rakini, rudhya priya. <clears throat> so this again, all these deities actually. Dakini, Shankini, and Rankini, these three are other deities also associated with 
with the Devi Mandala, or the Devi surrounded by her, her attendants. Right? These are names of certain attendants in different Tantric texts will describe these attendants differently. Right? But, but they also relate to the deities within the chakras that are given like in such texts and like uh, a common one. One most I mean one I'm most familiar with in Kali Sasanama, these are mentioned as the deities of certain chakras. Right. Also in the um um uh, in the uh, Sat Chakra Nirupana, which in our subtle anatomy class we talked a lot about. This is a, 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 an important text where we get our popular version of the chakras. When we think of, we have a six chakra system. We have six chakra, and then we've added one that doesn't actually, not in the actual text, it's on top of the head. And we assume, oh, that's what the chakras are. That's what the chakras are is in one important text, and that was the first text to be translated, right? And that got, uh, and, 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 um, got spread, right? And now it's very hard to, 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 to think of the chakras that aren't six chakras, six plus one, right? But that comes from a particular text that was translated by um, Arthur Avalon, right? And then also um, pop popularized by the, theos by the writers of the yeah. Theosophical Society. That's really important, right? Uh, with their, and also like our ideas of colors mm -hmm. and the deities, all of these are come from that. So these, are, these deities are also mentioned there, right? But they're, they, but they're assigned a different order than, they, than they're assigned in Lita Sasanama, mm -hmm. right? So it's interesting. Like, like for instance, um, this first Dakini, Right, Dakini in the Sat Chakra uh, Nirupana is in the in the Namuladara, right? But in the Lita Sasanama, she's um, where is she? Yeah, Dakini is in Vishuddha. She's here, right? So there's ways when I said just a different system, right? And so which one's right? That's it's. I think it's a mistake to think. Oh, these are actually describing reality as it is. These are describing traditional lineage ways to organize the mind about something that's a, that we can't understand, a mystery, to engage in energies and, and, and realities beyond our easily our easy conception. So these are lineage-based understandings, I think. So, uh, um, and in a certain sense, they kind of don't make sense outside their lineage context. Sometimes I hear people, I mean, it makes sense in our, in our world, it's, it seems to make sense, like people talking about, unrelated to this, oh, like, like chakra healing or using chakras for healing work. Right, assuming that oh, that the the throat chakra is this, and and you have a blockage like that, but as if that that's a thing outside of a lineage, right? Another lineage, which lineage? It just happens to be the one that happened to be published, and in the first tap that happened to be published in English is the one that is actually true, right? It's, it's a little bit suspicious, right? <laughs> right? These are lineage understandings of of mysteries, right? Dakini. So the 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 in the in the Sad Chakra Nirupana, it mentions the each of the chakras has a different. Um, it describes the the yantra, uh, uh, the amount of petals, and in the in, in in each chakra, the element attached to that that predominates in that chakra. It describes the the presiding deity, the presiding devi, the presiding deity. So often there's the form of Shiva with a consort. The there's also a particular animal. Like Muladhar, you can imagine it's an elephant, right, that holds up the whole thing, for example. Um, um, I think I can remember them all. Um, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the navel, it's a, it's a ram, I think. That was easy to remember because the mantra is ram, and it's a ram. So that's when I, when I get back when even my, my mushy memory can remember these two details. All right. <clears throat> and, and, and each... each, each um, Chakra has a bij mantra associated with the element, and is surrounded by the petals of the of that chakra are also surrounded by sounds, the sounds of the Sanskrit alphabet, right? So you add the as such chakra nirupana, you add all the chakras, the petals of the chakras together, you end up with in most conceptions the uh, letters of the alphabet, right? I think it's that we have. Four, uh, but yeah, four, six, ten, twelve, sixteen, two. I think that's fifty, right? So that's fifty letters, of course. And you have a few extra letters that have to be fit in, but so so it makes perfect. It, it it's a very nice system, right? So this these deities are connected to that system, right? So in the Sad Chakra Rupana, Dakini, who is the name of this first this first deity in this uh, verse thirty four and uh, name two sixty three. Right, she's in Muladhara, right, and then it moves up Muladhara to Swadhisthana is Rakini, 
Manipura Lakini, in Anahata Kakini, in Vishura Shakini, and Agna Hakini. This is the system as presented. This is, you don't need to remember these, but just show, I want to show you where these take place in, this, in, the, in, in the system. So in the Sri Vijay tradition, the Sasanam is the other one that's, um, can't say popular, it's, it's also quite mysterious, right? and also lineage-based, but because Lita Sasanam has become very popular as a devotional practice. Two, three hundred years ago, it was not a devotional practice. It was, it was you have to be initiated in Sri Vijay in order to chant Lita Sasanam. We, we uh, hearing uh, one a very well known Sri Vidya guru, who is very traditional in that sense. Uh, we, when he was asked, "Is it okay?" Because now everybody's chanting Lita Sasanam without Diksha in the Sri Vidya Mantra, he says it can't be that bell can't be unrung, right? It's out. <laughs> it's and now every people people gather, ladies gather. To, I mean, for years actually, they were, we call them the Friday ladies. Every Friday they came and chanted Lita Sasanam. I never investigated, are you initiating the Sri Vidya, you know, who am I to ask? That's, you know, right, it was a devotional act. And so, I mean, it was wonderful. Every, I mean, for years, this, this room was filled with little, little sasana every, every Friday, guaranteed. And sometimes they made garlands as the, as the mantra was made. At the end of the whole thing, they had a garland for Ma. It was really wonderful, right? So, so in the, the Lita Sasanama, these deities are also there in a slightly different order, right? So just to give, uh, just for the sake of recording it, Right in the as per Lita Sasanama, Shakini is in Muladhara, Kakini in Swadistana, Lakini in Manipura, Rakini in Anahata, Dakini, Dakini our deity here in Vishuddha, Hakini at in Agnya, and and uh, uh, and Yakini is top of there. There already you have a, a seven a seven chakra system. So the Hasranama is there, right. So we can think actually in because Lita Sasanama is there, we have it has a it provides a Dhyan mantra for that deity. And then it separates. If you know if you're familiar with Lita Sasanama, this section, like for instance, um uh, um uh, Dakini, her name is there in Lita Sasanama, it's name four eighty two, if you want to look it up. And the preceding the preceding nine names are describing her qualities. Right, so you can, and so her Dhyan mantra it pretty much is an exact description of those nine names. The nine names is simply like is simply the Dhyan mantra pulled apart. So I'll give you the Dhyan mantra as in, as per tradition, the Sri tradition, in the cavity of the throat. Although, like I said, in, in the Sadhakra Nirupana, it's in, she's at the base of the spine here. She's in the throat. In the cavity of the throat, the center called Vishuddhi, in the sixteen petal lotus, I adore Dakini, rosy. rosy Three-eyed, bearing club, sword, trident, and large skin in her hand. These are her acrements. Having one face, stri striking living beings with fear. Right. Always fond of paisham. Right. This is actually, this is if you want to know how to please her, you can, I mean, I, I, and to please me, is you bring very high-quality paisham to offer him up. Right. Uh, presiding over the organ of touch. Surrounded by Amrita and other deities. So she's a deity, is one of the deities that surrounds a goddess, right? But she, each of these deities also has their own mandala surrounded by other goddesses, her attendants or her energy. So in that list is given Amrita and other deities, other attendant deities, right? And worshipped by warriors. So if you're a warrior, if she's worshipped by warrior. So that's the mantra. Now you see, actually, from, from verse 475, from name 475 to 482, it lists all those details in the Mahavali form. Om Vishuddhi, Vishuddhi Chakra Nilaya. She who resides in Vishuddha Chakra. Uh, Araka Varnam. She who is slightly rosy in complexion. Right? Trelochana. She who has three eyes. Um, Kat, uh, Katvangari Praharana. She who holds a club and other weapons. Uh, Vadanaika Samanvita, she who has only one face. So some of these deities will have two faces, three faces, six faces, like that, so that she has a single face. Um, um, pa, uh, Pashu Loka Bhayankari, she who fills bound souls with fear. And she, she's, she, she, she fear, people are, who's scared of her? Bound souls, Pashu, uh, those who are bound, Pashu Loka. Amritari Maha Shakti Samanvrita, uh, Samvrita, Samvrita, she was surrounded by Amrita and other great Shaktis. Maha Shakti Samrita. Right? And then Dakini, she who is a deity known as Dakini. So in this verse, so what does it mean that she is Dakini? So 
it could just be describing a quality of her of her world that she's one of her deities, Dakini. One of the deities that surrounds her is Dakini. Also, that she is that Kali is the deity of the of that that are exists within our chakra. It's her forms that are in each chakra, and then we and that means when we awaken or worship or um, uh, 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 that it's her. These are her energies. These are her shaktis, right? Right. Uh, um, So the so if she is in Vishuddha Chakra as per Kali's uh, Lita Sasanama, so her name is given in another text um, is uh, Vajreshwari. So there's another name, as a more well-known goddess, Vajreshwari, right? And she's her. I think her name is given for did I write it down four sixty-eight in in Lita Sasanama also, right? Is a yogic and, and that and Vajreshwari is considered the yogic name for Dakini, right? So there's also a deity called Dakini Devi, right? A form of Kali, a form of Durga, that's um, actually very much like Mahishasura Marudini. She has a Durga form, right? A killing Mahishasura, ten arm, I think, ten arm form, and she. It's it's the original temple is in Bangladesh, and actually some would maybe even it's in Dhaka, right? Dhaka is in Bangladesh, right? I get my yeah. So so I think maybe even that she's Dake, Dakeshwari is the the goddess of Dhaka. So Dhaka itself is named after Dakini. Perhaps this is one way you can make this connection. Interesting, during, during a tumultuous time, the deity Dakeshwari, the original deity, was moved to Calcutta. Right? And so you can go now to Calcutta. There's a, in, in an old home. There's a beautiful, very uh, Haley Goswami took me um, to see to, took uh, Rampiridas myself to go see her one time. I would not have found her on my own. She's been a beautiful deity. Is still now in Dhaka, Dakeshwari or Dakini, but the the original deity before uh, um, is still in Calcutta. Been there for hundreds of years uh, um, to protect her from invasion. So you can see, you can go to to uh, 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 to see Dakini Devi in 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 Bangladesh, or you can go to Calcutta. Mm. So in that connection with the um, uh, the deities, these Shakini, Kakini, Lakini, Rakini, Dakini, these deities within the chakras, right? There are seven chakras, right? In in uh, in the um, in the Satchakra Nupa under six, but in the Kali, in the Lita Sasanama, there's already developed idea of seven, which is our way we think of it, right? Those those are related to the seven um, seven datus, the seven uh, Body substances, right, connected to in that that are a lot of uh, uh, um, Ayurveda also considers these things. The seven datus. These are the primary constitu constituents. Is that the right word? Yes. They're made of content. Contis my tongue can't do it. Contis contis can you say it? Thank you. Of the body, right. <laughs> And they're connected to the to the six to the six or seven chakras also. So there's rasa, uh, uh, that lymph lymphatic system, rakta, blood, masa, muscle, meda, tissue, asti, bone, maja, bone marrow, marrow, shukra, semen, right? And I like that. Uh, um, so these these are they think they're 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 they said these are the structure to which our body is built. The foundation of our body are these seven datus. This is why, at the base of the spine, the the, the muladhara chakra is under, is believed that there's the, the 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 animal, the vahana of that chakra is a seven is a seven headed um, elephant. Right, so elephant is is the one that holds everything up, and what he's holding up, we think of him as the seven chakras, right? But actually, it's also the seven datus that go to hold up all the constitutes of the. Constituents of the body. I got it right. Constituents of the body. I think I, politically, I know constituents. Right. I, I can. I have to think. I have to change mode, which I don't want to. <laughs> Ma. So Vishuddha Chakra is the seat of of Rasa, um, uh, the limbs, the limbs, lymph lymphatic system in, the, in that system. So Dakini also we have. Very ancient, other other ancient uh, descriptions of dak dakini or dakinis, right? So we have dakini as a deity that's within our body, 
right, or a deity that surrounds Ma, but there's also Dakinis, the category, as per some traditions. In, in Buddhism also we have Dakinis. Actually, we have many, but we have these, a category of mantras called Kavacha mantras that are to protect us. And one of the things they're protecting us from is Dakinis. So that's obviously not protecting us. Maybe it is protecting us from the deity that resides mm-hmm. over the lymphatic system in the, in, in the Vishuddha Chakra, right? But or there's also there's fearful energies and deities, right? And uh, uh, spirits, spiritual entities, right? That we may need protection from. And one of them is Dakinis, right? So I know Dakini, Rakini, Yakini, Yakshini, all these things are the things that... But that's always interesting. If, 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 if Dakini means these fearful um, female spirits... Right, that we pray to Kali to protect us from, but she is Dakini. She is those spirits also. Right, that's another way of thinking. You have to. Uh, it's quite all inclusive, right? So, in some texts, it describes it as a race of demonesses who eat flesh and vital and the vital essences of humans. So these vital essences, these are the Datu. So they mean with who is taking the essence, right? Right. In Nepalese and Tibetan Tantra, they have they're very often referred to. They're and they're described as um, in 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 Buddhist Tantra described as fierce looking female, fierce looking, right? So they're fierce. We even uh, it describes her as fierce female. They're 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 devis, right? Embodiments, but in Buddhism of of enlightened energy, right? So actually, like enlightened energy is fierce. <laughs> And female, in case you're wondering. <laughs> it's a good thing to remember. This is the Shakta text, right? <laughs> you know, I have to remind ourselves a lot. We're up against a lot <laughs> when we want to think of these things. But the light and energy itself, when it comes in, so these these are, to some, they're, it's, they're demonesses. To others, they're, but those demonesses are actually enlightened and enlightening, enlightening energy, right? Another category of Dakinis used in Tibetan and Nepalese Buddhism, <clears throat> they're human females who have attained a very high level of spiritual development, right? With the um, help of tantric initiates, kind of like we, almost like yoginis, we sometimes think of yoginis or above deities as well as female practitioners. Dakinis are, are considered a category of extremely advanced but fierce female practitioners. The word dakini also comes from this, uh, uh, from diete, which means like the fly. And so they're also considered to be um, sky deities, af- at- atmospheric deities, right? And then you can see if there's sh- so do if you shoot a chakra, there's a space, right? So as you can see, you can see they're 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 all kind of all these things come together a little bit, right? And they're also yes, they're the attendants, whoever they are, whoever she is, right? Here it's described as this is Ma's name. One of Ma's names is Dakini, so she is those. Right or whatever those qualities of, of, of described, that is ma, right? But they're also, like I said, they're also the ma is surrounded by these female uh, deities, right? So there's a um, famous uh, conversation between well, Sri Ramakrishna on the boat ride that it's a, it takes place 20 minutes after that picture when Thakur is entering the boat with Keshav Sen, uh-huh. Vijay Krishna. So in that conversation, Keshav Sen, the famous Brahma leader, asked. Ask Takur in, in which way mother is playing. Mm-hmm. Well, the different forms of Kali. And he mentioned, oh, there's Smashan Kali, and there's uh, uh, Raksha Kali, and Nitya Kali. What are the other ones? Um, anyways, three four forms of Kali he mentioned. Mm-hmm. So then he mentioned Smashana Kali. Smashana Kali, the Kali of the cremation ground. Right? So Takur says, Smashana Kali is the image of destruction. She resides upon cremation in the cremation ground amidst corpses, jackals, dakinis, and yoginis. Mm. So there you have the exact uh, description, right? Blood streaming, a garland of heads around her neck, a girdle of human arms, and hundreds of thousands around, and of, in the hundreds of thousands around her waist, right? So it's interesting that, that I'm just noticing. I've, I've read that many times. I've never thought of that. That her her hands are hundreds of thousands of hands. And actually, all those details about the heads around her neck, the girdle of arms around her waist, blood streaming, and, uh, and cremation grounds and corpses, we've talked about because these names already come, right? So we've, we have previous classes recorded about all those details. But now we're getting to this Dakini and Yogini. We actually talked about Yoginis. That, that name has come up, uh, who the Yoginis are. So Dakinis are another one of these. The category is the type of Yogini, 
right? So we have Dakini and then Shakini. Shakini is a very similar uh, uh, deity. So uh, Kali is surrounded by Dakinis and Yoginis. So Dakini is a category, and Shakini is one of the Yoginis, right? So Dakini is the whole category, a particular deity or, or the category of, of, of female deities. And the yoginis, usually understood that she's surrounded by groups of yoginis. Usually there's a list of, of ever-changing list of eight, right? And then, and of course, in the Kali Gantara, we have many, we have eight, we have, and we also have uh, uh, 15, also listed as yoginis, right? But, um, um, and then in the list of 64, there's not a fixed, established group of, of who those eight, those sixty-four yoginis are, we have two lists that we use in our Kali Puja and Durga Puja. But there's other texts that have different lists of the yoginis. Um, uh, the Sri Matotara Tantra. This is a text. Can I, I, there's too many tas in there, so I have to I have to look at it in practice in order to say it. Ma, Sri Matotara Tantra. Right, it describes the yogini chakra. They group the the surround the around the central goddess is surrounded by yoginis in the intimate group of eight yoginis. Right before you get to outer groups, um, is is uh, uh, is uh, um, shakini is there, right? And the eight yoginis are said to in in that text uh, are said to come from. Um, um, and also Gorak Shamita Samita also mentions this list of deities, said to come from. Um, uh, 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 so the body of Samvarta Bhairava. So there's many ways of many different Bhairava, just like there's many yoginis and dakinis and shakinis and like that. And and uh, there's also many Bhairavas. And so one of the one of the conceptions of a primary Bhairava, Samvarta Bhairava, the yoginis come from her. And actually in the ancient yogini temples, there's three or four remnants of yogini temples maybe you know about in India there where the 64 yoginis are there in an open open and a roofless structure right and in the center is always a Bhairava right so this is the idea from Bhairava come the yoginis so this is from Bhairava came these these this group of eight yoginis and each yogini that comes from the Sambharata yogini has their own Bhairava right and so the Bhairava attached to which the Shakini uh, uh, Yogini is Unmata, Unmata uh, Bhairava. Of course, in our list, we also worship Unmata Bhairava, but connected to a, to a Matrika. The, the lists don't always match, right? According to the text and according to the lineage, how you understand these things. Shakini is described in her Dhyan Mantra as having a, um, um, as a, uh, having a lion head. Right. And so there's many deities that uh, in some of our worship we also worship where one form one yogini has a lion head, another has a has a camel head, another one has a horse head, like that. These are all symbolic things also, but she's said to have a lion head or also having or having a cat head. Right. And she has eight arms and is addicted to what is she drink? She she's addicted to marrow, bone marrow. Mm -hmm. Right, and so we can so we can see actually what she what she's connected to in the chakras. She's connected to marrow, right? So she drinks marrow, right? She's a so you can imagine. Anyways, you can see even these are these are profound philosophical and yogic things, but they're in this world in this particular corner of of Kali worship. We're given a little bit of what I always call it Halloweeny Im images, <laughs> right? You know, it's cremation ground and ghosts and female spirits and flesh eating things and blood drinking deities, and maybe, of course, there may be deities that drink blood and, and eat flesh, right? But also, it's our we also we happen to have blood and flesh. We happen to have marrow. We happen to have consist, constituents of our body, right? Uh, that that are her, that she loves, that she dwells in, and that she eats. Right, so you can think of these things have must have profound meaning. Each one of those, take each one of those and you think about it. Right. Or she's described in her Dhyan Mantra as Dumra. She's dark, right, and smoky. Right. Um, she's also seen as one of she's also in many texts is described as a attendant, one of the attendants of Mother Durga. Right. Durga and Shiva. 
So just like Dak, just like the Dakini has a place in the chakras, in the uh, Sat Chakra Nirupana as well as in the Lita Sasanama. Similarly, Shakini has the same thing. So in in the Sat Chakra Nirupana, she is in she is in Vishuddha. So she Dakini is in Vishuddha in in. In our, but here she is in Vishuddha and Lita Sasanam, she is in Muladhara. Shakini is in Muladhara Chakra. And her Dhyan Mantra, I'll describe her Dhyan Mantra given. We meditate upon Shakini, who resides in the four petaled, petaled Muladhara Chakra lotus, five faced, three eyes, smoke colored, presiding over bones, bones and marrow, right, of living beings, bearing in her hands goad, lotus, book, and Gyan Mudra, attended by the gentle Varada and other deities. Fond of eating um, 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 Mudra, beans, and intoxicated with mead. So here she drinks mead, and the other text she drinks marrow. <laughs> so you can see also, like, when a deity is drinking mead, is it really mead? It can be, right? There's, there's research being done. Actually, our friend Adi Keshav is doing some research on on like the, is like when Ma drinks wine or something like that. Is she drink? Is that only symbolic? Symbolic, but or does she drink wine? It depends on which tradition you come from. Some places she drinks wine and it describes how to make such a wine. But also, if she drinks an internal wine, right or marrow, what does that mean? That's how to make that is not easy. Also, right. Um, so then, so in the in Lita Sasanama, these are the names. Just like there's a group of names describing um, Dakini, these are the groups of names describing Shakini. Mula Daramba Buja Rudha, Rudha, she who resides in the lotus in the Muladhara. Pancha Vaktra, she who ha, Vaktra, she who has five faces. Ashti, Ashti Samstita, she who resides in the bones. Ankushari uh, Praharana, she who holds goad and other weapons, as described. Um, Bharadi Nishevita. Uh, she was attended by Varada and other Shaktis. These are her cluster of deities, right? Uh, mud, uh, mud Gauda Na Shakta Chitta. She was particularly fond of food offerings made of mudga, a type of lentil. And Shakyam, Shak, Shakyamba Swarupini. She was in the form of the of the uh, uh, the, the yogini or the the goddess um, Shakini. So just looking during going through our text and trying to find other references to these are enigmatic little d de- and actually soon the the, the 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 tech even the next verse will move away from this these um yogini chakra deities right into more like her qualities of bhavani rudrani you know these type of more names that we more familiar names that uh, of more familiar names of familiar goddesses right so um um but uh, 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 so just trying to find before moving on, trying to find other examples of this, right? Um, in the Agni Purana, it mentions uh, this uh, in the West, extremely le- unknown goddess Kubjika, which is a very famous, important goddess in Tantra in, in India, and especially in Nepal and like that. Um, um, Agni Purana describes that a certain group of goddesses, Dakini, Rakini, Kakini, Shakini, and Yakshini, should be worshipped in the six directions. Right, so again, these are these are deities being worshipped. Just giving some examples. So there's other like um, in the Kubjika Kubjika Mata Tantra also describes the seven goddesses and how they they are um, uh, that we offer to them symbolically our semen, our bones, our marrow, our fat, our flesh, our blood, skin, respectively. To that idea. So then then you have a little break from this list. I think it's a break. Or if there's not a break, I don't know the connection to Kshanta. Kshanta, right? So Kshanta is another, is actually there is a name. We have Yadavi Sarva Bhuteshu, Kshanti Rupa Samstita, right? So we have that. We know that verse, right? So that's that's a quality, directly a quality of Divine Mother, right? In the form of forbearance, I guess is a good word, Kshanta. So in the middle of all this, now her name is Kshanta. And then again, we go to Rakini, we continue the list, right? So it could be that sometimes, you know, it's like you, you need you need something that fits the space and there's another name and how it happened, you get the name got put in there. That could be it. Could be it. 
Or it could be actually that Shanta could be one of these yoginis whose names I'm not, I don't know enough about these clusters of goddesses to know like that. Or it could be a quality of one of these goddesses. Perhaps perhaps Shanta is a name, one of the qualities of Shakini. Because I'll tell you in the next verse, the next name, Rakini and Rudhyapriya. I believe Rudhyapriya is a quality of, 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 of Rakini. Rakini presides over blood and, the, and, and, and Rudhyapriya means she who loves blood. Right, so there you can see the connection there. So maybe there's a connection there. I don't. It's not obvious to me what the connection. I don't have enough knowledge to, to know what that connection is. But anyway, she is what it's whatever the meaning, whatever the intention. Right, it's a beautiful divine quality. This is a virtue, a virtuous quality. Shanta. It means patient. It means forbearing, or or, or for we have forbearing. It means bearing. That would hold things up. It comes from the term right, of, of holding things up, and you can see. Bones and marrow hold things up. The seven datus hold things up. Maybe that's a quality that is mentioning deities of the seven datus that hold, and it's described in the tantra that these seven datus hold up the body, right? So maybe it's that these are qualities of this cluster of deities that she, but Kali as these deities holds up our body. Could be that, right? I like to think of that's. I like to say that it's that, but like I said, it was in the absence of any any traditional commentaries, right? It also Shanta means like a forgiving mind, an enduring endurance, enduring. And these are, not only is it a quality of something like the quality of the of the earth is to hold things up, right, of a bone to hold up the body, but it's also a a quality of 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 uh, it's also a human quality as a virtue, the ability to to withstand, and to tolerate, right, right. And in, in the Yadavi Sarvabhuti Shu mentioned in the Chandi, what time is it? Oh, I'm thinking, oh, it's, we're only half hour, I've run out of time, so <laughs> we'll just finish it. Um, 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 uh, we started late, that's why I, my timing is a little off today. Um, in the Yadavi Sarvabhuti Shu, Shanti Rupan, that list, that beautiful litany, Yadavi Sarvabhuti Shu, Matri Rupan Samsita, Shanti Rupan Samsita, Laja Rupan Samsita, um, what are the other ones? Um, so many. Uh, uh, hmm? yeah, so so many. But so this one, Shantirupana. What are those? They're actually different. Each one is a different quality. Yadavi, sort of that goddess, right? Who here we're worshiping? That, that Kali who exists in all beings. That it actually makes very nice sense here. That Kali, because all these deities, Dakini, Shakini, Kakini, and Rakini, all, we say are exist in our body, exist in all beings, including us, right? Right, so she exists as as these deities, but she also exists at states of consciousness. Right, that long list primarily are states of consciousness. And actually, it starts or ends with uh, uh, what is it? Um, no, no, but what is that? It says Chaitanya Rup, Chaitanya. What is that one? Before it starts to list, it breaks the rhythm. Hmm? Yeah, so that's like the, the yeah, vision in the, in, the, in the states yeah. in the states of con, it describes consciousness, mm-hmm. and then it starts listing each one of these are different states of consciousness, mm-hmm. right? You know, including one that's bewildering, Branti, right? Mm-hmm. And actually, one of her names, the next verse, Branti, verse. <laughs> right, there it is, Branti, <laughs> in the sake of confusion. Yeah. So also you have so Shanta is one of these one of Yadavi Shanta, and then later mm-hmm. Branti in the next verse, the next three names later is Branti Rupen or something like that. Right, so it's another state of consciousness, right? And so I'm reminded whenever I think of those Yadavi Sarva Buddha, I remember my own Guru Guru Maharaj. Um, he would describe, I would say that his his name for God is that uh, some unseen power. That was his name for God. That was his go to. Trying to there's some unseen power. We call that Shakti, right? Right. That's plain. And it's, and, and, it's, and he says that just like electricity. Here, electricity is in the form of light. We don't see electricity, but we see light. We don't see electricity, but we hear in the microphone it becomes a sound, right? And in the heater, the way he was right, in the heater it becomes in, it becomes heat, and in the cooler it becomes coldness, right? So like there's some unseen power, some shock that 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 we don't see, but we see its manifestations. So consciousness we don't always, of course, consciousness is the seer. We don't always it can't be seen, but we can see its qual its manifestations, right? So all these that long list can be seen as manifestations of consciousness, right? So similarly, so kshanta is is one of such one of those uh, qualities, a state or manifestation of consciousness. It's also very distinctly from our perspective a human state. 
So this is a, a, a one of the natural states that humans go through, right? So Kali is those that, right? So also this is also in 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 uh, what is it? Uh, Shanta means long suffering, tolerant, right? Also it's a name for the earth. And earth is all they all call it there that sustained, long suffering, right? Tolerate so much, and it's it's done in the gendered world, right? It's seen as a feminine quality, right? The the patient and forbearing, like this, and therefore the earth is seen as feminine like this. So Ma Kali does not only have such qualities; she is long suffering and also quick to anger, <laughs> right? One other one is she who destroy. What? Shatru Mardini is the next, in the next three, four names later, right? She who kills our de- enemies, right? She's, she's long-suffering and she kills enemies. So we can't just take, oh, all these, these docile qualities are feminine qualities, right? You know, it's like the, the killer of enemies is also a feminine quality, right? But, but also the thing that we usually think of as feminine qualities from our culturally uh, um, conditioned perspective are Every, because in the Kali Sasana we learn, in Shaktism we learn, actually every quality is a feminine quality. Every state of consciousness is her state of consciousness, right? And so just for the sake of finishing, and and if you're waiting for RIT, you'll have to wait two minutes, five minutes. Um, uh, uh, rakini, and then so uh, so that's um, Kshanta, the Surakini and Rudipriya. So Rakini, in the chakra system, just like Dakini and Shakini, she also is there. In Sad Chakra Rupana, she is in Swadhisthana Chakra. In Lita Hasunama, she is in Anahata Chakra in the heart. Right? And you can see Anahata Chakra, that's we usually think of our heart is there. Right? So she's connected to blood in this system also. Right. In the Kali, so I'll give her Dhyan Mantra. We meditate upon Rakini Devi, bestower of wishes, resided in the twelve petal lotus in the heart, having two faces, protruding tusks. Black in color, holding a disc, trident, skull, drum in her hands, three-eyed, presiding over blood, served by Kalaratri and other attendants, fond of oily food and worshipped by the brave. Right. So also each one of these has a, her favorite type of food. Right. So you have to think what the, I mean. I don't know if I'm especially dear to <laughs> to this, to this form because I'm also very fond of oily food, but this is a problem. Maybe it's causing problem in my blood. Actually, we'll see. You know. So then the group of names is Sasanama, just that pull apart this. The Anahata Nilaya, she who resides in Anahata Lotus. Um, Sha, uh, Shyam, Shyamaba, she who is black complexion. Mandana Devyaha, she who has two faces. Damstro Jwala, she has, has f- fierce tusks, shining tusks. Right? Aksha Malari Dhara, she who wears a garland of Rudraksha or letters and other things. Rudriya Samsita, she who presides over the blood of all living beings. Kala Ratrari Shakya Shakyo Govrita. She was served by Kalarati and other Shakti, her own deities. Um, Snigdho Dhana. She was fond of uh, food containing things like ghee and oily, some fatty food. Right? Maha, uh, Maha Virendra Varada. She who bestows boons on the, on the um, heroic, right? Rakamba. Rakyam, Rakini Amba Sarupini, she who is a form of Rakini, right? So in that, her name is, she resides over blood, right? So the very next name, I believe, is connected to it, Rudhya Priya. So the translation, the previous translation I was reading says, she who is beloved to those who cry, right? And I think understanding like Rudra as in crying, I think it's a, I think it's just a misreading also, she is, we can say she's definitely fond of those who weep and cry, or fond of Rudra, but it's probably not the same Rudra. Actually, my spelling is not the same Rudra. It's um, Rudhira. Rudhira. It's not Rudra Priya, Rudhya Priya. Rud, Rudhya is blood, right? She who is beloved, who is dear, dear to blood or who loves blood, to whom blood is dear, right? So she's, she exists within the body, in, in, near the heart that pumps blood. So that makes sense. Right, Rudhya means blood. In Lisa Sasanama, Rud, there's also a name Lisa Sasanama, Rudhya Samsita, she who, who is established in blood, who's established in blood, Samsita. Yadevi Sarvabhute Shu, Rudhira Samsita, Rudhira Rupa, we could say like that, right? She exists in all beings in the form of blood, 
right? And what is blood? Blood, of course, blood is blood, but blood has some. Blood is literally our life. When blood stops flowing, we call that death, right? And 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 also, blood is a symbol of life, right? This is why, especially with Shakta deities, blood is is so prevalent. And here, of course, this is a vegetarian uh, um, Satvika temple. But you see, Mal's surrounded by red. She has red flags and red curtains and red flowers and red hibiscus and red kumkum, right? Uh, and here I am on a red cloth. And here, if you look at the Kali Mandir, it's all, everything is, our couches are red, right? They're not bloody. They're right? the sim- symbol of vitality of prana, right? Prana Devi, the goddess of prana, she exists to describe she's bright red, Right, she exists on a on a bright red blood lotus, right, fully in 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 in, in an ocean of blood, right. So that means our blood also, right. So that's where our prana is, you know. You see, you stop the blood from something, you lose your feelings. Consciousness and blood are so intimately connected, right. Um, you just sit on your hand a little bit, or you know, we'll see if I get up. Sometimes, I get up and fall <laughs> because blood has been blood is no longer there. Consciousness and blood are so life. Consciousness and blood are intimately connected. Experientially, at least, right. So she who is so rudhira samsita, she who resides within the blood, right. Or you can also some commentators, because Lita Sadma has been commented on, right, is that she exists. She's she's she, she exists within the blood, or she um, she is the blood within us, right. She is, in other words, she's like our life is blood, right. She is our blood, right, and. To whom blood is dear, this could also refer to blood offerings, right? Symbolic or actual, right? That means she, she who is a, a Kali is a blood drinking deity, at least symbolically, and all the she holds a cup of blood and like we can think, but that means prana, right? right? Blood is prana, blood is life, right? And so, what does it mean to offer a blood sacrifice? We don't offer blood sacrifices, but we do. We offer our life, our prana, our attention, our consciousness. Right, our life breath. We even, say, you know, it's like oh, somebody who's their, their, um, their, um, their life. You know, their life. They dedicate their life blood to them, right, like this. So Padma Padma Laya Padma Mukhi Padma Vibhushana Dakini Shakini Kshanta Rakini Rudhira Priya. So these are verse uh, up to this is verse thirty four up to name two sixty seven. Next week, God willing, we'll start with. 267, and those names, they change, they change their mood, right? They're, uh, um, but also very beautiful. Are there any questions or comments? I went a little bit over, but I started late. Um. Hmm? You can, yeah, you can say, yeah, uh, yeah, you can save it. I don't have to reprint. Unless you really want it, then you can take it. Well, I was going to say, if a jackal comes to you, it's hmm? a form of moth, and you should give a blood offering. Mm. What yeah. should I do with a dog or jackal approaches? Should I have something on hand to give me blood offering, or what's the symbolic significance of this jackal drinking? Yeah, so if because in, in, in those stories, if a jackal comes, this idea is that that, that certain type of sadhana is that Ma is supposed to come in the form of a jackal, mm-hmm. right? So she comes in the form of a jackal, and, and you offer her blood, something like that. Usually, it's the same this way, right? Right? It doesn't mean that every dog that comes to you, of course, it is she is Ma, but you, you but you have to, you have to, uh, uh, these. Perhaps if you're doing. Sadhana in a cremation ground in the middle of the night, and a dog, a jackal comes to you, then you're supposed to. But, but, <laughs> then go for the, the, it. but yeah, go for it. If that's if that's your thing, go for it, right, right. But also, you know, you, you know, they they close the gate at night. <laughs> you you were some experience. They don't let you pass sunset. You get stuck in there. You know. You told me that story, right? <laughs> and there's probably not jackals there, or even dogs running around, right? So you have to think that that if it's still if it's meaningful. Independent of an actual sadhana that like that, then you have to think what does that mean? What is what it, what what comes to you in a vision? You know, whatever it is that we we have to we have to feed it and offer it ourselves, right? So um, I tend to take to take that opportunity more symbolically than looking for dogs to cut myself and offer my blood to or something like that. Yeah. But it's also it's good to feed dogs. That's always good. Actually, any living thing that asks for food should be fed. But it's not like oh, if it's not for food, I have to, I have to, I have to cut myself and give it food. It's like that's you have to be. I think we need we need a a balanced perspective on that, <laughs> right? There are the example of saints who who you know what is it? A worm falls out of somebody's body and he puts the worm back in because it's eating. And you know it's like that's extreme, <laughs> right? We should not sure if that's the 
but the the meaning is very profound, obviously. But let me know if it happens, and then tell me tell me what you do. <laughs> you can try, <laughs> because also like I know people. I remember one time there was a devotee, an eccentric devotee. We have, as you know, we sometimes we've had eccentric devotees here, present company. <laughs> Not looking that direction, but <laughs> like Andre right? Uh, right. I remember one time we were like doing doing RIT, and this one person like going, "So do you offer mob blood?" In the middle of the conversation, I was like, oh. "Yeah, I'm doing like <laughs> go to a different temple." That's not what we do. Like this, even that stu- question is stupid, right? But he's like, "Do you offer your own blood?" I'm like, what are you talking about? It's like you want me to like, you yeah. It's like yes, yeah, like it's like well, yes, we we offer our life. And our consciousness, and our you know, and 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 our vitality, and you know, on the altar like that. But it's just like it's like a weird thing to ask publicly in the middle of an arati. You know, you know, we're singing Hare Krishna or something like that. You know, like it was, it was showing you there, there. It didn't quite match. <laughs> but anyways, it was interesting. It was interesting. <laughs> uh, no, <laughs> yes and no is the answer to that question. So. Mm. Mm. One is for the Buddha, one is for the jackal. What word was jar? That's a good, that's a, yeah, and it's not mentioned? It's not mentioned. It just said it brought two jars to feed the Buddhas, to feed the jackals. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a good, I don't remember, I don't remember that scene, right? But also the thing is that you, that, that, uh, uh, because, you know, in puja we do that. We also offer, we have, we call it a Buddha cup. We have a, we have a, um, uh, we have a, a copper cup that we feed the Buddhas in. And, and then they get get taken out to the back corner, and we, you know, prasadam, especially daily, we're supposed to do, but at least, at least during big pujas, we try to do it. We try to remember to do it. If we don't remember to do it, we always joke that they come in and looking for looking for food, <laughs> so we have to make sure. So we feed them. So the thing is, in that world, you know, it's like he's literally in a where where there are jackals, yeah. right? And where he did his tantra sadhana, this is forest. Now it'd be hard to get in. There's too many fences, you know. They have all these fences to keep cows out. So I think a jackal may have a hard time getting into. Um, um, even, we, even we can't get there anymore. <laughs> They've locked it all. all so you're all. saying it wasn't symbolic, it was literal. No, yeah, yeah. But the thing is, but in that world, you know, it's like yeah. jackals are maw's attendants. So, right. so you can think there, there's, there's animals of that edgy world now, right? Maybe it could, for us, it could be crows. You know, things like that. You know, it's like it could be because, I mean, we're, I remember one time, like, uh, uh, I had a, an experience. Uh, I was doing some late night special sadhanas, uh, uh, and I used to live in a, in a tent out here. And I was sitting outside, late, very late at night, midnight or something, past midnight, trying to do. And all of a sudden, this it was right out of a, out of like a, a Robert Sorbota book or something like that, right? This giant uh, white. It looked like a white wolf out of like a like a like, like a shaman new age book or something like that. Oh, came oh, in right in front of just like came in like it was like. I was thinking I was having some profound spiritual vision. Like, what do I do? Do I cut myself off? I mean, it was one of those things, right? Right, and then it went, it went away, right? And then I realized, and the next day, I, I was like, oh my God, I had a, I don't know what happened. It, like, like, it, was like, it looked like a wolf this big, right? And then I found out there was a, a neighbor had a very large white husky that would get out at night and wander around and come back in, right? But also, it's like, it doesn't mean that it wasn't, right. it wasn't directed by Ma, right? right? Or it could have also been that animals get away and then, you know, the, uh, and come into your come, but it was it was quite a it was one of those moments like oh my god it's happening oh my god it's happening. <laughs> in, in the good of beach, but, <laughs> but so I had one such experience. But it, before I knew what to do, it 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 ran it ran off again. But it would come in, it would come into the garden sometimes. You know, very, you know. We also had we have many. Also, when I used to live in in the in the cave, and in the summer I'd had the cave open. I one time I I, I woke up. And right in front of me was this big dog, just like, <laughs> and another. It wasn't as dramatic as a giant white wolf glow in the dark, white wolf on a full moon night, shining. It was quite dramatic. It was really good, right? It was just like a like a mutt next door got out and it came into my thing. It was like, look at me, it scared me a little bit. But yeah, and also I've had raccoons come and like pull pull on my covers. So I don't know if that was, was supposed to give it any of my blood or anything for that. Also, wow. <laughs> anyways, living outside. Hmm. Jai Sri Guru Maharaj Ki Jai, Jai Mahamaya Ki Jai, Swamiji Maharaj Ki Jai, Jai Madhakshini Shri Bhavatarini Nakshina Kali Ki Jai. Let's see how... Well, we can leave that for our team, maybe. Oh, okay.
opportunity. We never show our So beautiful she looks today. Very nice. Did you change the Slug came. I don't know if we're trusting that. Slug. Slug. <laughs> Slug. 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 Yes, it comes on, it came on during top for a It was long. It took a while. It felt long because we were. It was raining and muddy. I told you. I said it was not. Nice. I said it was not going to be fun, though. Yeah, fun, though. We have fun. We have fun. Sean, you have fun no matter what you do. <laughs> you guys sing and dance and do all the things. Thank you. 
Om Ram Krishna Ram Krishna Krishna Ram Chandraya Nam Krishna Ram Chandraya Nam Ram Krishna Devaya Nam Ram Krishna Ram Krishna Krishna Ram Chandraya Nam Krishna Ram Chandraya
भगवान श्री राम कृष्ण परमहंस देव की जय जय जगन्नाथ श्री शारद देवी की जय जय युगचार्य स्वामी विवेकानंद महाराज जी जय जय पूर्ण तीर्थ दक्षिणेश्वर धाम की जय नमः पार्वती पते हर हर
Thank you. 